This is the review for the Premium Bandai Master Grade Testament Gundam. We have here the Testament Gundam, and this is a Premium Bandai kit, so that means it's limited. Um, luckily enough, I'm in America, and we have a large enough uh, market where they create, you know, they created a U.S. division, so there isn't the import tax that would might uh, cause extra expenses in other countries that don't have a uh, Bandai division in their country. So this was a reasonably priced um, kit, not overly extravagant, more like, you know, maybe five, ten dollars more than a normal Master Grade. Um, but one thing I, I don't see what makes it so much premium as far as the gimmicks or the color separation, because as you can see, it's mostly just red with a little bit of, you know, burgundy and a little bit of regular red and slightly lighter red. Um, so I'm thinking the only reason why this is premium Bandai is it's limited. So this is the very first premium Bandai that I've ever put together. Um, it was, it, it is well designed. It's well um, constructed. The pieces go together very, very well. Um, there are a lot of C-clip and um, ball joint connections that are tighter than any ones I've found on other models. So this is a more recent one. I, this was done in 2001. So there, it is using more modern techniques than some of the older ones would be. So maybe that's why things fit so well, because they can be much more precise in the modeling. But... You know, th th this is a good kit. It's got it's got a good heft. It's not super heavy or anything like that. The joints can stay where they need to. Um, there's a you know the the hand. I'll get a little bit more into it with the articulation, but the thumb is a ball joint, but that's held in by this backing right here, and it's the type where basically the the backing and the thumb is always going to be there and in order to change the hands, the fingers and to different grasping or splayed hands or whatever, you just take the fingers off and replace them with something else. So it, 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 and it is nice and tight. I mean, it is just a ball joint there, but that's okay. It, this is also quite tight. Um, and there are some pretty neat accessories that come with it. Oops, sorry about that. There's this neat little backpack and this neat little uh, arm weapon that I'll get into with the accessory section. So overall, this was definitely worth building. Um, so th this might be more typical of premium Bandai than I, um, than I know because this is the very first one I've done. Now, one thing, pr premium Bandai kits do come with water slide decals more often than not and this one did definitely and they are very nice because they're the bandai standard ones so they are very nice and they're they go with the model very well so let's take a look at the accessories as i said it did come with additional fingers where you basically just take off the hand the fingers that are on there right now and then these just slip in with the normal uh rectangular peg and they fit really nice and, and tight on there. It comes with two guns. They're just they're pistols. Uh, one neat thing on this is, and I haven't seen this on another one, is that it actually has the um, the serial number of the mobile suit, or at least one of them. This is the Zamf serial number. Um, the other one is, I think, RXG, which I think is the original orb number. Um, but it's etched right there into the, uh, the gun, which is pretty cool. Normally, if something like that happens, it's a, it's a decal. But the fact that they etched it in, you can, um, panel align it and it shows really nice. The, the only negative thing is that it's all just one big piece of silver. Um, so you could paint it, uh, to be more realistic, um, if wanted. There are two beam sabers. They do have a bit of a unique handle. 
It's more. It's it's a square handle with a point in the bottom. Looks like a knife attack. You know, for the bottom that you can attack with that. Um, so that's pretty cool. And then, as far as the hands are concerned, you've got uh, two trigger fingers, two uh, hands to grasp the sabers, and then you have one splayed hand, which is the left hand. So they didn't give two splayed hands. That's okay. Now, one cool thing is that the specific hands for holding on to the weapons there is a little peg, a rectangular peg right in there. Look, having trouble focusing. My big fingers, I think they're, but there's a little thing right there. And there is a slot right there. And that fits right in to hold on. Oops, I hit the slot. So that fits right in there to hold on to the beam saber, which is nice. That way it's not going to slip around. And then also for the gun, there is on um, the trigger fingers on both of them, is there's a slot right there. I mean, sorry, there's a there's a rectangular peg right there in the grasping part of the fingers, and there's a slot on the front side of the actual uh, handle of the gun. And oh, if I get the right one, then that would be better. And you can just fit that in there, and the finger even goes right to the trigger, just like that. So that's pretty cool. That That's nice engineering where they made sure that everything made sense to put where, where to put things. So that that's really pretty cool. As I mentioned before, is there is a really nice backpack, and that just fits right here on the back in that rectangular one. This right here goes in there. Oops. You got, there's a, uh, there's a poly cap in there. One of those kind of big rectangular ones. So you just gotta work with it to get it in there. And that's one thing that I found interesting with this kit. There's a, there's a number of poly caps. Now, the poly caps do are are tight they're not super loose you know because you know they, there's a there's poly caps in the ankles um there's poly cap right there but that's just to hold it in place and there's you know poly caps here in the wrists that the ball joint goes into and they are quite tight so but those will loosen if if you move it around a lot and stuff like that so and then the other neat thing is there is this arm weapon which is quite unique for the testament and it has because it has these claws that extend and there's neat little articulation these move out and such and then there's a little clip right here where you attach this right to the back here and then this will go into, and this can go on to either arm, because both arms have this, but there's that little, there's that little uh, slot, right, or the, the peg hole right there in the back of the arm, of the forearm. So this, get the right orientation here. Yeah. The hand you know, better to have the fist on and probably the thumb down, but the, but the hand will go right into there, fit nicely in there so that this can attach. And the hand just goes right in there and then you have this on your, as your weapon. Whoops. With practice, it'll get on there. There we go. Now it's tight. And this is pretty cool. Like I said, this is, this is pretty unique for the, um, for the testament itself. There we go. Focused in. So that, that is pretty cool.
Another accessory that comes with it is it does come with its own stand. Now, this is probably just because they just use one stand mold for MG kits when they decide to include one in the kit. But this is the same stand that uh, was used, different color, but same mechanisms and such like that, that was used for the most recent Master Grade Extreme, the big uh, Strike Freedom Gundam. And um, this stand seems to be a bit of overkill for this, because the backpack isn't all that heavy. You, it can stand on its own with the backpack, and you can use the arm thing as a balance. Whereas the, uh, the Masquerade Extreme couldn't stand on its own, with the, or I could never get it. But, but it is nice that it includes a stand, but it's probably one that I'm not going to use, because it's just going to take up an awful lot of room on my shelf where I put these when they're done. So I'll probably wind up using, uh, you know, a type four or type five, um, instead something that's a little bit smaller, but it is nice that they give it. We'll take a look at the articulation now. <clears throat> and this has some pretty standard articulation that you would expect. The head goes back and forth. There is a combination of a ball joint for the neck and a little back and forth piece right down in there just to give it a little bit more back, forward and back movement, but it's mostly controlled by the, um, the ball joint in the neck, and it can go all the way around. It has nothing restricting it. The uh, shoulder pads can go all the way up. And it has this little piece on each side that moves back and forth. That going up allows the arm to come out at just over a 90 degree angle from the body. It can turn at the shoulder. Of course, the sh that, that part can turn as well. It can turn at the shoulder, but then it can turn at the top. I guess that would be the top of the upper arm. It has some nice, it has a nice bend doesn't quite do 180, but it does almost. So that's nice. It's a, it's a double joint there. There's no, there's no armor separation with the arm. And then it just has the, you know, the hand has the ball joint, the typical ball joint that is going to move on. And the thumb right there has a ball joint as well. So it can move around if needed. These are... The thumb moving around is probably more needed for the other finger types, like the trigger finger and stuff like that. So you could put the thumb around the handle and stuff like that. The waist has your typical turn. Now it is restricted by the, um, the, the side skirt, you know, the skirting around the waist. And there isn't much of a crunch. A little bit, but not much, and it's just the ball joint at the that connects the upper body and the waist that is doing the movement. Get the arms out of the way here. The the, the side skirts are actually quite nice. Um, they are tight. They are ball joints going into the waist, but they have some nice movement and they don't come apart. They don't come undone. Now, these side ones are C-clips, and those are nice and tight, and they go up. They don't quite go flat, neither do the front or the back, because we got the back. But they all are, all are in, designed to be individually moved. It's not like some kits where you have to just clip the plastic between the two ball joints to get them to move independently. Um, and if we move this up, the leg could come out. Probably about an 80 degree. That's not so bad. It can, you know, there's a lot of restricted movement from the, um, from the skirts. The back does better. The front is a bit more restrictive and the side goes pretty good. And that's on both legs. Um, there is, the knee has a double joint mechanism. So you can go back pretty much the full 180. 
Now, the neat thing I like about this, and this, when I put this together and started moving the leg around, I'm like, ah, here's a reason for premium. The mechanisms in here and the way that this is all put together is really, really nice. There's, there's several basically, you know, not really pistons on the level of the uh, Barbatos Master Grade, but they, they allow the articulation to do all this stuff so that you can get some movement. Like here, this knee thing stays right where it is, essentially, because of this little device here, this mechanism that attaches it. So you get some nice, you do have to sometimes be careful about what order you're doing things. Back in. I wouldn't have any problem with this before. There we go. But so there is some nice separation when you move the knee. That That's always a good thing, and it's on both sides. The ankle, this is really cool, I think, in that, you know, many times with this type of, of design where you have a, uh, basically, ankle shields, it's one piece, and this, they separated into two pieces. Now, one is basically just attached to the back of the foot, so it moves with the foot. But this one is independent. And they even went the extra detail to when the, when everything is together. I don't know if you can see that or not, but there's like an, a, a little tab there at the foot. There. That just fits right in here so that it basically kind of goes together as one looking as one piece and the mechanism that this front skirt is there's a ball joint but there's also a hinge that lets it go up and down slightly which is really neat uh, so they did do I mean they did definitely do some great design the foot the toes can move around quite a bit the heel is pretty much stationary it can turn all the way around. Just the back armor fits. That's why that must be why this can move up just to get out of the way. So you you can move this around. I mean, you're not going to be able to go all the way around because of the front armor. And then this basically can move like this, and and the entire thing has a ball joint there. So the articulation is nice. I mean, it's not you know. The best, but it's not terrible either. It's it's typical of a of a kit, yeah, but it is all done with you know poly caps essentially. Now we've got the backpack here, and this has some nice movement on it as well. These wings here can go out on each side, right here from the front. This can fold in as well on both sides these can turn if needed um this here is the way that it attaches and it's got several joints so you can move it around however you want or you can make it face and come over the shoulder it has a clip here oh, that's right it does turn there it doesn't turn up here but it does turn where it connects to the backpack and then there's this slider right here. It can go back and forth. And actually, one of the neat things, which is also very unique for the Testament, is these are almost like claws or teeth where they can come out and be an additional, you know, shielding or weapon or whatever. And they even are, you know, the top ones just have one tooth, if you will, and they fit in together between the two teeth of the bottom ones and the same thing happens here it's got quite an intricate little you know you can do a lot of things where putting these things just because of the way that this whole connecting mechanism articulates so you can do quite a few things the one thing you can't do is you cannot turn this because this has a a, a tab that keeps it in place but so you can't twist 
but you can extend and stuff like that. And then with this on top of it, you can have it come out over the shoulder and then these things would extend out. So that's pretty cool. Once again, I mean, the design is, is really well done. I mean, the design is definitely premium as far as how the pieces fit together and the overall articulation and stuff like that of the accessories, especially at the backpack. And this right here, this is the unique um, arm weapon. And these can go back and forth and twist. These are like little wings on the side or just kind of forearm shielding, which is pretty cool. I think this is actually intended also because this can be detach and become a basically a, a controlled weapon um, while fighting because this can even, this part even comes off and you can simulate this firing out. It's got these little side blades that can move out at, you know, 180 degrees. And then the most in, most neat thing about it are these claws. And each, all three of these can bend at the tip and it has a ball joint connecting it to the base. And the nice thing is, is that these ball joints are in place because the way that they get put in is that you have to slide them in. And then this top piece, when these pieces went together, it holds those in. So these aren't going to come out, period. So it's got the three claws where you can, you know, have some fun with the posing and stuff like that. So overall, I'm extremely happy with this piece. I think it was worth it. Um, once again... Keeping in mind that since I'm in the U.S., there aren't additional expenses that I have to worry about when getting premium Bandai kits. If you are able to find this at a reasonable price, or at least reasonable for you, I would recommend it. If you like the Testament, I think you're going to be very happy with this when you're done. Um, you know, it, it, it is a pretty standard one, but there's a lot of little details that you really don't see when it's, you know, all together. But there's a lot of little details on how things move around and stuff like that, that I, it is, it's really engineered beautifully. And I know I've said that multiple times, but it really is. I mean, I've seen some that are just like, wow, they just kind of threw this together because they need to get the kit out. Whereas this one was really well designed. And they thought about basically every aspect on how things got went together. I mean, there's no seam lines, really, unless you really look close. Now, what I did do is, as you can see, I do have the water slide decals, which came with it. I did do panel lining. And I did do a matte coat over it just to protect everything. So this isn't quite out of the box, but it is. It ha does have the panel lining and the matte coat on there and then water slides. But in water slides are very nice. I mean, they, they, I think I followed basically just what was in the, um, the mapping document. And, um, so it, that's what I, where I put it. And I think they're really well placed and they were fun to put on too. There isn't a whole lot that you have to worry about. It's not like these, all these little intricate things, but there are some. So, you know, when I was taking this, you know, when I was taking this off the runners and trying to figure out, you know, what made this premium other than limited, you know, uh, edition type of thing, I was thinking, you know, during that time that I was going to give this not a terrible grade, but certainly not a, you know, a, a I would probably going to look at a B or something like that. But as I was putting this together and seeing how well the design was and how everything fit together, I realized that this is a much better kit than it initially uh, was presented, you know, what, what I originally saw it as. So I'm definitely going to give this an A. I think this, this is typical and you know, above average, not superior or anything like that. But this is what you would expect when you get a master grade or even a premium Bandai Master Grade. I have a feeling that this is probably going to be the standard for that type of thing. So 
Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you for the next one. Thank you for watching this video right to the end. If you did enjoy it, please do give it a thumbs up. That does help out the channel. If you would like notifications as to when new videos are posted to this channel, please do subscribe and hit that notification bell. If you do have time, please do enjoy one of the videos that are popping up around my head.